Hey there, cats and kittens, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents, the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today I'm very happy to bring you issue number 72, Plastic Man. And I don't know why, but I feel the need to say his name that way sometimes. It just sounds appropriate. Um, for those of you who are aware of this guy, he's been around for quite a long time, since the Golden Age, honestly. He appeared in animated form once upon a time in the old Super Friends cartoon show alongside most of the Justice League, although they were the Super Friends, as the title suggested. He's also more recently appeared on episodes of Batman the Brave and the Bold on Cartoon Network, and even more recently than that, he has made an appearance on the new animated show Young Justice, which was pretty cool. So he's out there, he's around. For those of you who aren't aware of Plastic Man, he is probably one of the funniest characters in the DC Universe. He's always making quips as he's fighting, sort of like Spider-Man, I suppose. But of course, you'll learn all about that and more in the magazine, which will tell us everything we need to know about Plastic Man, also known as Patrick O'Brien. And then we'll take a look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's a really nice figure. It does have a couple of issues that I will discuss. We'll get to that shortly. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Enjoy. Issue number 72 of the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, Plastic Man! First up, the character section. I think it's time we blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. This is where we meet Patrick O'Brien, a middle management level mobster who had a reputation as being one of the slickest guys in the mafia. So much so that it earned him the nickname, The Eel. woke up in a monastery being cared for by the monk that lived there, and he also found that his body was now malleable and elastic. Patrick was unable to control these new abilities at first and frightened almost everyone he came upon, so he decided to take his own life by jumping off a bridge, but was saved by a local passerby named Woozy Winks. I think it's time we blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. After stopping so many crimes around the city, Patrick was thrown into the spotlight. When asked by reporters what his name was, they accidentally misheard him and started calling him Plastic Man. Plastic Man was also extended an associate membership into the Justice League. Plastic Man was also hired by the FBI to track himself down, since they were unaware that Eel O'Brien and Plastic Man were one and the same. After his time with the FBI, he went back to working closely with the Justice League, proving to them that he was an asset to the team in more ways than one. Get everybody on the step together. Okay, three, two, one, let's go.
Not too long after this, Plastic Man resurfaced and joined back up with the Justice League of America when Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman went missing for a full year. Plastic Man was even able to survive an attack from an evil, zombified version of former Justice Leaguer Vibe during the event known as Blackest Night. Next, we look at a couple of Plastic Man's classic stories. First up, Plastic Man issues 1 through 4. And this is Plastic Man's origins, retold in 1988, over 40 years since the character was first created in 1941. It reestablishes him as a hero in the DC Universe, it retells his origins and updates them for a more modern time. We meet his sidekick, Woozy Winks, and we get to see him developing and understanding these strange new abilities. The series also improved his profile as a character in the DC Universe, led to him becoming a member of the Justice League, and it established him as one of the quirkiest and most entertaining characters in the DCU. We also have Plastic Man on the Lam. And if you aren't familiar with Plastic Man, then this is the story to pick up. This collects the first half dozen stories in the new ongoing series, at least at the time, starring Plastic Man. It explores his character more deeply, you get to meet his supporting cast members, and they get some of their own wacky zany adventures. And the best part is, writer-artist Kyle Baker does an amazing job of illustrating the world as Plastic Man sees it in this cartoonish sort of style. It won an Eisner Award, and if you want a great Plastic Man story, this is the one to pick up. Plastic Man's Friends and Foes section features his wife, Agent Morgan, his friend, Woozy Winks, and the villainous Royal Flush Gang. And finally, the iconography section just takes a look at some of the other flexible characters in the DC Universe. First, we look at Plastic Man's own son, Luke, who grew up to join the Teen Titans as the hero, Offspring. The Justice League's other super-stretchable superhero, Ralph Dibney, the Elongated Man. The shape-shifting villainess known as Gemini. Former B-movie star Rita Farr, now known as Elastigirl. And finally, a superheroic group of robots who collectively call themselves the Metal Men. And here we have Plastic Man. And I don't know why I have to say his name that way, but I do. Patrick O'Brien. And this is probably one of the most unique if not the most unique figure in the entire run of the series, just because he's not fully formed. He's a shapeshifter, sort of like Metamorpho, but they took it to an even bigger extreme with this one. As you can see, only his upper body is really molded to look like a normal human form, and he's very lanky, he's very thin, which I really dig. He's not a big bulky superhero, and they can't, they got that across very well here with this sculpt. Um, his head sculpt is also really nice, he looks great. He sort of reminds me of Elvis a little bit, like the later, fatter years of Elvis when he was in Vegas. Um, so I kind of dig that. It, it's funny, it's comical looking, which I dig. You can see how big his hands are, oversized, the one is a fist, the other is that big open palm and then the lower body is there you go it's a jack-in-the-box I mean there's this belt which is the box itself there's a little crank on the side the lid his lower body is made to look like a little spring basically so unique for sure and really well sculpted he's a nice figure I don't think he's for everyone but uh, he's pretty cool I have some issues with him which of course we'll touch upon in just a moment Plastic Man sits atop the classic DC logo, and the underside of the base features his name and serial number. To give you a sense of scale, here he is with his friend Batman and Justice League teammates Superman and Wonder Woman. 
as well as a nice big group shot with every member of the Justice League Eagle Moss has produced so far. Plastic Man is another really nice figure in the line. He is just shy of being absolutely perfect and great. There are just a couple of things that keep him from being that, at least for me. He is really unique, though, in the line, and I think a great character to pick up. We shall start, as always, with the good, of which there is plenty on this guy. I really love the pose. I think it's dynamic and unique. Love that his powers come across. The sculpting is fantastic on this guy. Pretty much everything on him is really perfect. Uh, starting with the base, of course, I love the fact that he's like a jack-in-the-box. His belt is the pattern of the box itself, that red, or uh, yellow and black paint job. And you can see the lines are not just painted, they're also sculpted. I love the red crank off to the side, the fact that the diamond pattern on the center is raised and that's sort of his logo so it's there which I think is great touch his lower body if you want to call it that is the springy part of the jack-in-the-box there it almost looks like it is a spring like it should be a bobblehead type of thing that would actually wiggle back and forth I think that would have been a cool touch actually in hindsight and of course the lid is also part of it with that red lid which is a great little touch his upper body is really nicely sculpted. Again, I like the fact that he's so lanky. He's so thin looking. He's got that bony chest. You can see his ribs. Again, the paint is really clean. The crisscross of the black of uh, the tie strings, I guess, of that leotard are really great. His back is nicely sculpted as well. You can see the musculature. And again, really well painted, very clean. His hands are absolutely fantastic as well. And this is where his powers come through. His arms and his hands, you can see that one hand is just a huge exaggerated fist. They did all the knuckles lots of wrinkles, great flesh tone, love the fact that you can see his fingernails on both hands and both arms as well are really long and thin and wiry looking. They look like they should be made out of a bendy type of material. I think it's a really great effect. Finally, the head sculpt is really, really nice. I do li love the glasses. I love the hair, the fact that he's got the curl down the forehead. I like that he's smiling or laughing. He looks sort of cocky and playful, which I think is great. The hair sculpt all the way around is really well done. It's a nice shade of black and he just looks like a comical kind of guy like he's cracking up the entire time he's making fun of the people he's fighting it's a really nice head sculpt the bad and we'll go ahead and get a pick out of the way first I wish his chin was a little bit sharper he looks to Jay Leno, I wish he looked a little bit more pointy in the chin. That's just me. The only other bad is a criticism I have of this guy. I wish that he was lead all the way through. He is not. Only his upper body is actually molded from lead. The lower body is all plastic. And I guess that's sort of neat when you consider he's a plastic man, so they made part of him out of plastic. I guess that's kind of cool. But... I don't know, I just, it's a lead collection, so I wish he was all lead. That's just me, it's still a really nice figure. Finally, the ugly. Believe it or not, he's a pretty solid figure. The only thing, I guess, that you would want to watch out for would be the thumb on the hand above his head and the crank on the side of the Jack in the Box box. Especially when you're taking it out of the package, you want to watch that crank. It is a little bit fragile. Overall, I'm really happy with this guy, to be totally honest with you. There's very little not to like, aside from the fact that he's not entirely made out of lead. That's my one major problem with the guy. I really think he's cool. Is he for everyone? Definitely not. But he is for you if you're a completionist like me, or if you just want one of the more unique characters to have on your shelf. He definitely breaks up the rest of the Justice League. There's no one else that looks quite like him. And I also like the fact, I really like the fact, that his personality comes through in the in the mold in the sculpt he looks whimsical he looks wacky and zany and i really really like that and uh, i hope that you guys have enjoyed this review of plastic man thanks so much for watching i hope you stick around for just a second to check out a teaser trailer for the next figure in the line yet another hero a member of the justice society of america and one of the toughest heroes i think in all of the dcu so please stick around as always i am your host the monkey boy aka jay to his friends Thanks for watching.